Hi everybody again. Um, so I figured that I would put out a little video on the rule sets for each of the games that we have to potentially play during the interview portions of Wheel of Gaming. Um, as you can see here, we have Snakes and Foxes. I was initially playing this game, but I figured I would do an isolated video just explaining how to play the game and the overall rules. So, to begin with, you have the web, or the, uh, the board itself. So, as it's mentioned in the books, there's courage to strengthen, fire to bind, music to dazzle, iron to bind. Um, what this does is you have these hatches, or cross hatches on the board. Each of them represent a location where pieces can move. The middle square, or the middle circle, is only available if you have touched the outside edge and you're trying to win the game, which that is the process. You're trying to get from here to the outside ring and back to the middle without being touched by any of the pieces around the perimeter of the board. These are the snakes and foxes. So we have our snakes and we have our foxes here. We also have our pieces, which are represented by the Aes Sedai symbol in black and white. Our dice here each have a face on them. Two faces for snakes, two faces for foxes, and two pips. Let me see if I can get a pip. There we go. So what you do is, is you roll your six dice every single round, and by shaking these you're able to roll them in this tabletop simulator, and you act out the way that it's played. Now the way that I've structured this game, um, there is a order that the pieces go, which is you, and then snakes, and then foxes. So with you, you are the pip. So what this pip means is I can move one space. So I'm going to move out the circle, which the circle doesn't matter. You can always go to one of the edge pieces here. So I've moved to this cross section. Now the snakes are going to move and a snake, a single snake or multiple snakes use these three total pips to move. Uh, as fast as possible to get to me. So, to iterate, this snake would move here, and then here, and then here. That is the fastest route to me based on the board. And then two foxes would also move, or a fox would move twice. So in this scenario, you would take this fox and move it down two squares. So this is to try to get to me with their fastest line. The other player would then shake their dice and roll for their move. Now in this case, they got four foxes, one pip, and one snake. Now they can option to move in the same direction I did, or they can go in any other direction. Again, the board is universal, but the snakes and foxes will start to move based on where this piece moves. So for the sake of trying to split up their forces, we'll say that this fox go or this uh, piece goes here. They got their one pip. Now four fox moves are going to happen to try to get to them as fast as possible. So we move down this arrow, down here. This one can't move here, so it will move here. And then it will have its fourth move. So it went one, two, three, and four. Now the snakes and foxes cannot go into this circle, but they can surround the perimeter and pretty much make it impossible for you to win. And then a single snake move will happen, which uh, the most efficient one that I'm seeing would be here. And then you would proceed to the next round. And you would repeat this again. This is two pips, two snakes, and two foxes. This is kind of an ideal roll, um, at least in my time that I've played the game. Um, so with two, uh, with two moves, I have to move twice. And again, this seems to happen to me. I have to move twice, and I can't move. I can, I can move back and forth, but you can only do it once. So I'm going to kind of waste my turn by moving here and then moving here. And then two snake moves are going to happen, which means that either way I was dead. So I'm going back to the start, but the snake still does move, and so does the uh, fox. So again, we're going to get those two and then one more snake move. So now the other player is the only reason that we're still in this round. And the other player got a almost full run. They got four move pieces. So they're gonna move here, and then they're gonna move here, here. Oh, you don't really wanna go there, do you? They're actually gonna move here. So they're actually gonna go in a big circle, 
And this would be the ideal way to do it because now this fox is gonna move here and this snake is gonna move here. So as you can see, the game will keep going like this. Um, I can continue to play, but I'm trying to keep the video relatively short. Um, but this is a brief explanation of kind of how snakes and foxes works. Um, we'll go uh, one more round each. So that'll be how I do it. So I'm gonna put these over here so I can grab them. And we'll roll, we'll see if we're alive. Okay, so that's, um, this one will get re-rolled. As will this one. Okay, so we got four snakes, or four foxes, one pip, and one snake. So I get to move one space. So I'm gonna move over here because there's only one snake move and that's the closest one. And then four snake, and then four fox moves will happen. So four fox moves, um, ideally, I'm trying to find a good way for them to go. One, two, three, and four. And again, if they get touched on this round, then we are out and the board resets. So they got two pips, they got two snakes, two foxes. So they're gonna go for the breakaway and try to get to the outside edge. So at this point, they're allowed to now go back to the circle, but you have two snake moves and two fox moves that are gonna happen. So the first thing that's gonna happen is a snake's gonna come eat them. And we have to start all the way back over. And the game would reset because both of us were touched by a snake or fox. So I hope that this video does go over the rules of snakes and foxes. Um, I hope that someone is ready to play with me. I've already gotten some contacts from some people since I posted the first video that are interested enough. So hopefully we'll have some content by the end of the week. And I hope that this video was helpful to anybody that was ever wondering how Snakes and Foxes is actually played. Um, have a good rest of the day, and thank you very much for your time.